Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. At 7 o'clock, we have a uh, public hearing scheduled involving the best value methodology, which is proposed local law number one of 2014. Uh, so, would you read the, the uh, public notice, please? Please take notice that the Town Board of Wilton, New York's County of Saratoga will hold a public hearing concerning local law number one of 2014, which would authorize contract awards based on best value methodology. Said public hearing will consider local law number one of 2014, which would authorize the award of town contracts on the basis of best value rather than simply the lowest bidder, pursuant to the provisions of General Municipal Law Section 103. The determination to award a particular contract on the basis of best value would be made by the purchasing agent and would include the specific factors to be applied in determining best value. Said proposed local law provides an additional procurement option to the town which may expedite the procurement, <coughs> procurement process and result in cost savings. Said public hearing will be held on Thursday, June 5th, 2014 at 7 p.m. at Wilton Town Hall, located at 22 Traver Road in the town of Wilton, at which time all persons will be given an opportunity to be heard. Copies of local law number one will be available for, the, for review in the town clerk's office during regular business hours. Okay, I will uh, open the public hearing involving uh, best value methodology. Is there anybody here to... Uh, Nobody signed up? Uh, no. Julie? No. Okay. Is there anybody who hasn't signed up who wants to speak on the public hearing involving this uh, best value methodology? <coughs> okay. Seeing none, hearing none, uh, I'll close the public hearing. The next public hearing is scheduled for 7.10, so I can't start before that. So <coughs> it's a short break.
Okay, it's 7 o'clock, um, 7.10. We have a seven, uh, second public hearing scheduled for 7.10 involving our ethics and disclosure law, which is proposed local law number two of 2014, uh, which is intended to amend local law number four of 2012. So, um, did you read the public notice, Sue? Please take notice that the Town Board of Wilton, New York County of Saratoga will hold a public hearing concerning Local Law Number 2 of 2014, which would amend Local Law Number 4 of 2012, known as Ethics and Disclosure. Said public hearing will consider an amendment to the Ethics and Disclosure Legislation, Section 9-7A, which provides that the Ethics Advisory Board shall consist of five members, each appointed by a unanimous vote of the Town Board. The proposed amendment is as follows. The Ethics Advisory Board shall consist of five members, each appointed by a simple majority vote of the Town Board. <coughs> Said public hearing will be held on Thursday, June 5th, 2014 at 710 at Wilton Town Hall, located at 22 Traver Road, Wilton, New York. At that time, all persons will be given an opportunity to be heard. A copy of the proposed local law number two will be available for review in the Town Clerk's Office during regular business hours. Okay, so is the amendment to, to change it from majority to what? It's not called majority, is it unanimous? Or unanimous, I'm sorry. Yeah. It was unanimous. It's your and, point. And now it's unanimous to simple majority. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Um, is there anyone uh, here to speak on the public hearing regarding the amendment to uh, local law number four of 2012? Changing yes. Nothing else to do with it. It's just on the, um, the makeup of the, of the uh, or voting the, the members in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. Uh, the, the change, right now it takes uh, a unanimous vote of the town board to appoint a member to, of the ethics committee. Right. This is proposal is to appoint a member by a, a simple majority of th three of the five board members. That's the only change to the law. Anyone else? Okay, seeing uh, none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, next, we have some bid openings. Uh, the first is on for a new two four by four super crew truck. Sue, you want to open those bids? The first bid is from Carbone Auto Group. Bid price is twenty-seven thousand eight hundred thirty-two dollars. What model of trucks are? That is a twenty-fourteen Ford F one hundred and fifty XL crew cab four by four. F one hundred and fifty crew. Yep. The second one is from Niemer Auto Group. Um, there's no certified check included in with this one, though. And the bid is $27,432.40, with the exceptions of uh, no chrome wheel available for the specified truck. Um, anticipated delivery can be made within a 120-day window required. <coughs> um, it is anticipated that the delivery can be made within a 120-day window required, provided the bid award is made and purchase order received in time to place an order with the manufacturer. Is 
Is that the only two bids on that mm -hmm. one? It is. We'll give those to Kirk. And we have another bid opening on a uh, uh, 2009 or newer Vacuum Street Sweeper. This is from St. John. $25,000. Delivery is within five days after receipt of order. And that's the only one. Is he only, only one bidder on that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Kirk, you want to take a look at these and see if they uh, comply with all the, your, the bid specifications? Mm -hmm. We'll get to it later on in the, in the, in the meeting. Okay, uh, at this time, uh, then I will uh, call the order the regular uh, monthly meeting of the Wilton Town Board, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Two roll call, please. Supervisor Johnson. Here. Councilman Lamp. Here. Councilwoman Pletipa. Here. Deputy Supervisor Stryker. Here. Councilman McEachern. Excuse. Okay. The first part of the meeting is our public uh, comment uh, period. We have two people that signed up. Uh, first is uh, Nancy Dwyer. regarding the above reference matter that I first notified you of on April 15th. I did not see on the agenda I printed the other day or on tonight's agenda that an executive session was scheduled for this evening. To date, I have not been notified of any action taken on your part regarding the actions of this employee. I was informed that the employee denied saying they wanted to hit me and that the third party person would neither confirm nor deny the statements in my letter to you. I submit to you tonight a signed and notarized letter from that person confirming that not only is what I said accurate, but that she did indeed verbally confirm it when asked by the supervisor's office during their investigation. I respectfully request that this matter be dealt with as this has been dragging on going on two months now. I also submitted this issue to our town's ethics committee and was informed that this is not a matter they can consider because it is outside the scope of the ethics law as it is currently written for the town's building. At our March town board meeting, it was requested that a committee be formed to look at our ethics law. 
I urge you to consider broadening the scope of their authority to consider behavior and actions of town employees. As Count Councilman Lance said, the board should not be both judge and jury. Even Councilman Stryker suggested I submit my complaint to the Ethics Committee and that the right to investigate town employees was within their committee's scope and that the Ethics Board could look at this and make a judgment. As you have written the law, Mr. Stryker, they cannot. Thank you for consideration of this matter. Just a comment. Um, you know, first of all, the, the ethics board uh, obviously did review it, and we didn't receive any, any correspondence on that because we wouldn't, because it was found it wasn't something that's subject to to their uh, review. Um, you know, personnel issues are not obviously discussed in public, but a matter it's, be, it's being dealt with. It has been investigated, and it has been turned over to uh, our outside consultant, um, um, HR. Human, uh, what's the name of the company? Yeah, that uh, and it will be dealt with. Uh, Dan Taglianto. I'd like to address a situation that been evolving. It's been evolving because of the popularity and the growth of the town of Wilton. It has to do with our highways. Uh, not so much the highways, but the uh, traffic devices. At present, it was a political decision to remove the money from outside sources from, from the, uh, all, uh, all in the end from uh, the Senate. And that money was to upgrade and make safer and make travel in and out on Route 50, the Cornelius Vanderbilt Highway, where lanes were going to be narrowed, meaning that the, the traffic speed would be reduced. There was going to be a planning down the center of the island, or an island down the center. There's also to be a walkway, well actually a walkway to nowhere, because if the walkway would get you to the Northway Bridge at exit 15, and you'd have to make a record. People, pedestrians and bicycles would have to go out onto the highway or the shoulder breakdown line. What it is now, I would like to suggest that the town of Wilton set up some type of a committee for to address future growth and future needs of the uh, highway as it has to do with traffic control. There's a number of uh, locations that warrant uh, traffic lights. Again, two of their costs, the 80 to 100,000, if not more. And then finally, the, the one thing that irks me, and probably it does the most that I live two quarters of a mile from it, is probably the most used, or second most used, avenue for people to leave Wilton and to get onto the Northway at exit 15. It's Kick Jones Road. In the midst of the political decision that was made elsewhere, they did all of the other intersections along Route 50 from Saratoga to uh, Van Dam Street out to almost X-15. They've left Gick Road, Gick Jones Road, without a right-hand turning lane. Yet they continue to improve and put money into a, a, a sinkhole. They've repaired both of the storm drains one of those storm drains could have just as easily been moved in five feet and to anticipate a right, the right hand turning lane. The, the, the island, the Meridian Island, the north and west of the uh, current intersection is constantly hit by vehicles causing not only damage to the vehicle because of the driver's uh, abilities or lack of ability, but the high, uh, New York State the uh, transportation department has to go out and replace that sign and uh, erect it. And they do it at least eight, nine times a year. 
And it's probably also that in effect one of the more uh, likely spots if you're going to get into an accident. So as I, I'll summarize, we'd like to see that some consideration be made to have a traffic committee with suggestions so we can be prepared in the future because we don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in full traffic lights in right now. I thank you. Thank you, Dan. Actually, uh, Ryan and I were just talking about the uh, that <coughs> Jones Road Route 50 because the state's going to be making improvements on there soon. So, Ryan, just want to kind of, I mean, we're on top of that, uh, Dan, and we want to make sure that, that that intersection gets taken care of. Want to bring us up to date? Uh, well, I just got phone calls into DOT regarding that. And it's, uh, you know, there's nothing in their plan right now for oh, no. they, they, they said that from the beginning. Until they get the money, they can't spend them. Well, that's the thing. And, uh, you know, I just want the money in there, you know, that we have a plan for that. Well, that, that's what I was suggesting. They have political that's what you know. They're saying it's an important part. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars out of Milton recently and other cities. Well, when I did drive back and finish the list that they had started, this is why it was a year ago. Thank you for your okay. We'll stay on top of that, Dan. That is, in that right turn there is, is, is something that needs to be addressed. And as you said, all the other ones were addressed all the way down, except except that one. So. Um. Okay, uh, the first item is the minutes pending from our um, May meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? We'll make a motion to approve the meetings from May. Okay, is there a second? Second. A motion and second. Is there any uh, changes? I think uh, Jeff had a couple of changes that were that were corrected and uh, somebody else and mm -hmm. Ryan. So those, those you, you received the amended minutes. So. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Uh, tonight we have, uh, I'd like to welcome Tim, Tim Welch. He's the president of the Friends of Grand Cottage. Welcome Tim and he's got a uh, short presentation he'd like to uh, show the town board and the audience regarding Grand Cottage. Thank you. Thanks Supervisor Jansen. I'm here specifically to update you on. Excuse me, Tim. Could you? Because we we need the, the mic only because for uh, video videoing for Time Warner. Good enough. I'm no stranger to microphones. I know that. <laughs> I'm here specifically to thank the town of Wilton for its generosity over the past six years that I've been involved with the organization, but it goes back quite a bit further than that. The generosity and money and in-kind services, Kurt Wood Woodcock has helped us out a great deal with some of the infrastructure problems we've had at uh, Grant Cottage. And each year over the past year, we've been, over the past four years, we've been setting records for attendance. We had 5,300 visitors last year, paid visitors. And the unique thing about uh, Mount McGregor and Grant Cottage is the fact that it's the only state historic site without any state employees. We operated with three part-time employees and we do it by charging five bucks a head to take a tour of the facility. And the significance of what's happening now, as I'm sure you all know, is that the Mount McGregor Correctional Facility will be closing by the 26th of July and we get all of our utilities from the prison. And so it creates some unique problems for us. But for those in the television audience who aren't familiar with uh, Grant Cottage, let me just point out uh, how significant it is and why we continue to break records, especially now that we're going through 150 year anniversaries of the start of the Civil War, of Grant's greatest victory last year in Vicksburg, this year the 150th anniversary of Ulysses S. Grant uh, becoming uh, the main Union general. Uh, next year he will, uh, will be the 150th anniversary of the end of the war. And all of these anniversaries, a lot of people who haven't uh, 
a tremendous thirst for Civil War history come to Grant Cottage because it's like a pilgrimage. It's one of the few places in New York State that has a Civil War connection. And so it makes it that much more compelling uh, that we have this historic site in this town, uh, which this town has been so generously uh, supporting over the past several years. This is our 25th year of having the Friends Group that kept Grant Cottage open. 25 years ago, the state of New York was going to close it because it was in a fiscal line. And the Friends Group that I'm president of basically just came up with a plan to be able to keep it open by charging visitors to go through it. The significance of this site is the fact that the 18th president of the United States spent the last six weeks of his life there writing his memoirs. As you may know, Ulysses S. Grant, although he had healthier times, there he is in Saratoga Springs in 1869, he's on the right of course, uh, sitting on the Union Hotel porch six months after he became president in September of 1869. We've documented he's been in Saratoga Springs at least three times before he died in Wilton uh, in uh, 1885, 139 years ago plus one week. In June 16th uh, of 1885, he came up to Wilton because it was uh, such a great place uh, to try to uh, finish his book. He was writing his memoirs, and he was doing that to try to get his family out of pocket. His son had gotten them into a Ponzi scheme and took all of his money out of Wall Street Bank, $150,000, or quite a bit of money at that time, and he was dying of throat and tongue cancer. And it was so hot in New York City that uh, summer that the Drexel family that owned the lodge up at the top of the mountain in the Balmoral Hotel, they invited him to come up and finish his book because it was quite a bit cooler on Mount McGregor. And so he came by train, the train went all the way up that, that uh, steep hill. He came out of his New York City townhouse, which you see there, by train, and he came all the way up to Wilton where he finished the last of two volumes of his memoirs. And within one year, after his death, which was July 23rd, 1885, he only spent six weeks up there. Within one year, his wife got $450,000 in royalties from the sale of that book. $11 million in today's money. So he not only conquered throat cancer in many ways, but he conquered poverty at the same time and gave his family a legacy. So that's the great story that we have to tell on top of Mount McGregor. Uh, that's Grant Cottage, preserved everything the way it was when the general was there. This is the general about, we figure about July 19th or 20th, about three or four days before he died. He's pretty much just finished the book at this point. He was, uh, that's the last picture actually taken before his death. And that's the porch of Grant Cottage, which you can see is preserved everything inside and outside the same way it was back at that time. There's a bound version of his memoirs. That's the inside of the cottage and the bed on which he died. This is the parlor area. Uh, there are floral wreaths that were that remain encased in beeswax uh, inside of uh, our cottage. That's uh, an interesting picture. If you'll notice, that's the Capitol recently built up at the top of State Street in Albany. And there's the General's funeral cortege going up State Street uh, in Albany on the 4th of August of 1885. So there's a tremendous amount of history that we talk about. And of course, there's a good deal of history right next door. The sanitarium just had its uh, 100th anniversary. It was started in 1913, the Metropolitan Life Sanitarium, which ultimately became Mount McGregor Correctional Facility. There's an aerial photograph, and if you see over here, here we are. Here's our little visitor center, and Grant Cottage is in the trees over here. Here's the prison property, and that's all going to close, and we're going to lose our utilities. Now, we've been promised by the state of New York, the Parks and Rec, uh, Department of Parks and Rec actually owns Grant Cottage and uh, uh, Corrections uh, owns our visitor center. And uh, what, what the plan is, is this, that 
about 50 acres with Grant Cottage over here and our little visitor center over here. This 50 acres will sort of be parceled off from the property presently part of the prison and will be merged with a larger parcel. Here's that little parcel here. And all these parcels in red represent about 900 acres around the prison. The prison is inside the blue. The prison will theoretically, the prison property will hopefully be marketed to a private concern. Uh, and then all of the areas in red will become a part of the Moreau Lake State Park, which is already 4,000 acres, so this will take it up to 5,000 acres. And we, in effect, will be a part of that. That is the plan. Now, nothing has really been decided yet, but theoretically, if that happens, then we'll be on the route of the park police. The park police will... Um, <coughs> monitor us theoretically. Also, the state police has a firing range up there that they intend to continue to utilize. And that, of course, will give another security presence because the big thing we're worried about, you know, a lot of people have said, boy, Grand Cod has got the best security system in the world. You're inside of a prison. Well, that's true, but that's going to go away and the prison's still going to be there and there's a lot of copper in there. And we're worried that vandals will come in there along the way they may vandalize Grant Cottage. So we're very concerned about security. So it's important that we have some sort of security presence after the prison closes. We also have a visitor center. Now we do have a septic tank there. So we think when they cut off the sewer when the prison closes, we'll be able to use the septic system there and maybe feed the cottages toilets. I mean, we don't need a lot of uh, septic, but we would be able to handle that. Uh, we're asking for a security audit to be done by the Department of Parks and Rec to try to come up with the latest surveillance techniques and, and technology to be able to handle the security issues in the future. Perhaps the town of Wilton, as it has done in the past, will help us with lawn mowing and maybe uh, snow plowing, because the prison used to plow the the snow in the winter time and they ain't going to do that no more and this is a very remote location and even if we had police and fire protection if nobody clogged the roads in the winter time we'd never get there before the place burned down so there's a lot of little detail things on this 25th anniversary ironically enough of the development of the friends work group that keeps mount mcgregor open so my main purpose is to say how much we appreciate what the town of Wilton has given to us, several, many, many thousands of dollars over the past 10 years at least. Um, and we hope that you are aware of our plight and will work with us to secure the future of Grant Cottage. We've been assured by the Department of Parks and Rec that there will be no impact on our season, the 2014 season, which lasts until Columbus Day. There will be no impact on this season. But after that, we're still negotiating what's going to happen next. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tim. Any any questions for uh, uh, Tim Walsh? Tim, I, I would just like to say that I, you know um, myself and the supervisors of the town of Moreau and the town of Corinth have Empire State Development has been very kind of proactive in you know contacting us as to the redevelopment of that that uh, facility but all of us have always reiterated to Empire State Development that you need to protect uh, Grand Cottage you need to provide the utilities for them I've been working with them and also Senator Marchion's office and they, they seem very receptive that they realize the importance of Grand Cottage and they will do everything they're telling us anyway that they're going to do everything possible to make sure that there's no interruption of, of, of any of the things that are happening there and they, they realize the importance of the cottage. So I just hope they stay true to their word. So do I. Thank you very <laughs> much, Uh, uh, next on the agenda is uh, road acceptances, Cedar Mill Way, Water Wheel Drive, and the Sawmill Court. Is, is Mark? Is Mark? Is you or Ryan? Yeah. Uh, 
The sentence is all ready to go? Uh, almost <coughs> complete. The uh, applicant's attorney has been working with us and we're uh, close to finished. Uh, what I'd suggest, and I have made a suggestion already, is a uh, resolution accepting the road's condition on final sign off by town engineer, town highway superintendent, and town council. You, know, you want to make a motion? Okay. Uh, I put forth the motion to accept the road's water wheel drive, portions of Cider Mill Way, and Sawmill Court within residential subdivision known as. The mill at Smith Bridge, as depicted on final map. Acceptance shall be contingent upon the town supervisor and town council's approval of final documents and authorize the town supervisor and town council to take all action necessary to accept. That's what I have. Do you want us to also talk about put in the. If the town highway superintendent wants to be included, I would include them. And, 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 and inclusive. Uh, that's what I thought. Right. Mm -hmm. And include the highway superintendent. Okay, we have a motion made. Is there a second? No. I would like to make a comment, though. Okay. Well, let's get, is it make a second, and then we'll comment. A, s a second. Okay. I'll All right, now it's for discussion. Okay. Um, this is not in regard to this these subdivisions uh, specifically, but it might be a good time to bring this up. And my question is... Um, I have the pathways plan here and uh, it talks many times in this plan about connectivity between different subdivisions and an open space and s open space deeded to the town and I'm just wondering I don't know who I'm asking I'm just making a general question are these things being looked at and are these connections being made between different subdivisions. I mean, it's kind of off the path. It is, oh, I know, but we're accepting we're accepting the roads and I just I don't know when else would be a a good time to ask such a thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know who I'm asking either. Well the, the I mean <laughs> Maybe Mike Dovis. <laughs> I know you guys always look at uh, connectivity, but it's kind of, uh, you know, I, I don't really want to get off the uh, agenda at this point in time. But um, at, at least vote on the motion. For yeah. Me. Okay, yeah, we, then we vote on the motion. I know I have a pattern of getting off that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for, for the time, we got, we got a motion and a second to accept the, the rose under the conditions uh, stated in the uh, motion. So is it um, the vote now? All, all those in favor of acceptance of the roads? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. We'll get back to you later. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I, I think it's a good good thing to look yeah. at. I, and I and I, I think it's always been part of the planning board. So they 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 try to try to do that in every case they can. So. Uh, Uh, next is we had a public hearing on the best value methodology, Cole's Law of, of Local Law Number One of 2014. Um, this involves the uh, we all know what it's about and accepting may, uh, ways to accept a, a maybe not the lowest bid, but uh, something that's uh, can turn out to be a better value than than the low bid. So, like a vehicle that gets much better gas miles than another vehicle might be more expensive but after three or four years it might be saving the town five six seven thousand dollars so is there a motion to uh, to approve proposed local law number one I'll make a motion approve it I'll second the motion your motion is second any discussion okay all in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed so moved um, we also had a public hearing on the ethics and disclosure law proposed local law number two, 2014. Um, the, the the public hearing uh, was to amend the law that current currently has a unanimous vote to appoint a member of the board. Um, the proposed amendment was to allow a simple majority vote. Um, I would just like to throw out for discussion before we vote on it the possibility of going to four out of five. I, I'm concerned about the politics of one party controlling um, uh, appointments to the board, right. and I, I think uh, adding um, 
four out of five would be uh, somewhat, you could still have that, that problem, but I think it would somewhat take that uh, out of out of the uh, equation. So just a suggestion that I think the board should consider before um, voting on just a simple majority. So I'm just throwing it out there for suggestion. Oh, I agree. We, we didn't, the intent was not to make the ethics board a political board. And I remember in, in the past discussions, you know, when you had Councilman Gerber, Rice, Pulse for people could say that was cronyism, people were putting their friends on the boards and politics and, you know, I didn't want it to be that way. I wanted everybody on the board to feel like I'm comfortable putting this person on, on the ethics board and there was no politics involved. So that's why the reason why I put the original five to nothing, but I think four to one is, is uh, you know, reasonable. Any thoughts? Um, do you recall, like, when you interviewed the other folks, like, what the numbers were? Were they close? Were they? Um, there were, my recollection is it was two applicants that received four, four out of five, but they didn't receive the, of the majority. And, th and that's, you know, that's why we don't have a full board. Um, uh, right now, maybe the I, well, I, I I think there's I personally think there was only just one. Well, I'm not sure. That, the other two that there were six applicants total. I think we passed one, three, one, and, one. and uh, I think one of them was four to one. But I just I just thought it would take the if you have a majority party controlling the appointments. That's all my, my reason for throwing that out. So. Okay, I'll make a motion that uh, we uh, change it to four to one. It's legal, Mark. It is. Can we, we don't need another public hearing. Well, hearing. I thought about that. I mean, you would need another, we would need another public hearing if it was considered a material change. One way to view that is public input so far, not very significant. You can, if you wish, not act tonight and have another public hearing on the proposed modification next month. I, I, I view it as a judgment call. I don't think it's crystal clear that it's such a change that it requires another public hearing. I think it's up to the board. Yeah, I mean, there was no, co there was no. I was say we didn't exactly have a huge amount of public input, you know, comment. On yeah, it was like zero. <laughs> no, we have one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, so. I, I mean, I, my preference would be is to just, if we're in agreement, is to uh, amend the the law to have four out of five as opposed to what was proposed in the three out of five. I'll second that. One. So Joanne made a motion. To, to I'll second that motion. There's a second. <laughs> further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, okay. Earlier we had the bid openings on a uh, four by four super crew uh, pickup. Kirk, have you reviewed these? Yeah, I looked at them years ago. Uh, we only have one bid on the sweeper. Yeah, we got. The, I'm, I'm talking about the other one first. Oh, okay. Four by four, we got two bids. One's the carbon auto group, and they do have a check in their uh, in their bid packet. Neemer sent a letter, and they couldn't guarantee delivery. And uh, uh, you know, there's, there's one other issue with them as far as uh, well, a portion of the spec. So I would, I would almost have, and they did not send a check with their bid proposal. So I guess we probably have to do uh, the cargo. Were they lower than the other one? No, they, they were $400 more. The other one was disqualified, though, based on they didn't comply with the... They didn't comply with the contractor request that 10% uh, bid bond or whatever you you know, mm -hmm. So here's the specs. Back. This is carbon only. These were the auto groups. All right. Jeff, did you say you, we talked uh, today you got a price on F-250, state bed? Oh, the state, yeah, the state con contract price, we have 250 cat was $25,000, 25000 However, um, Is it match what we want? In there that mm -hmm. Kirk had that I'm not aware of what the cost are. Um, but that's the base price. What side truck, power windows or cranks or? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
probably everything that Kirk had on his deck, with the exception of that options as well. Kirk, we spec this out. Is that the spec? But again, one thing. That's what I accept from the option. The specs I have are an F-150. So, I gotta believe it includes everything that's on the F-150. The options are, you know, CD, Champion, Chrome, um, and some other, you know, some other output. I think that might have it. So, it is too very good. Well, at least maybe look into it. We're buying more truck for less money. I think we'd be foolish, you know. Maybe we should look into it a little bit. And yeah. <coughs> then, uh, do we? What do we authorize? I thought we authorized him to go up for one fifty, right? You know, the Kelly. No, but if you're buying a, you know, you buy an F fifty between the two fifty, like ten thousand dollar difference. Now you're buying one for less for a state bid. Uh, I think we should look into a little more, buy more truck for less money. What was the difference? A couple of thousand? Yeah, 250 is 2,000, more than 8,000. The F-250 is. For an F-250 Ford, 4x4, four four, the highway department doesn't need, we don't need a three-quarter ton truck for the superintendent around here on the town end. Period. I've discussed this before. They're much tougher on gasoline or fuel. This happens to be gas. So in a year's time, what it costs the town board for me to drive around town in an F-250, I could save that money on an F-150. The F-50, F-150, 4x4, actually, I really don't even need an F-154. And we have Ford, Chevy, Dodges, whatever. My experience in the highway department with the repairs and maintenance on different kinds of vehicles is expensive and Ford's not the cheapest, period. I know that from my experience. The F-150 is, is, is an okay truck if the board wants to go with the F-150, but the F-250 to me, for me to go around and do whatever I have to do, it, 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 it's, not, it's really not an option to do. You're not going to save a thing. I'm not plowing with this truck, period. F-250 you can plow with. I don't need to plow a truck. So why, why buy the F-250? And besides, guys, I do a lot of miles in the course of a year. So guess what? Start bouncing around in a three-quarter truck doing my job, and you'll find out that you're back and you're, you know, you're, you're going to start to feel the difference then. I proposed originally a cheap little 4x4 SUV for me to do my job. All-wheel drive is all I need. The board didn't want to discuss that, and he said, no, that's probably not a good idea, and I agree with John on that, maybe. But for me to do my job, an F-250 is not, you know, you're going to save a couple of bucks on it, but you're going to, you're going to wind up spending more money for fuel. Fuel is also a portion of my budget. And I can give you the numbers on all of the vehicles we have for the amount of fuel that we use on every single vehicle in our fleet, including the ambulances, the fire departments, so, uh, buildings and grounds, anybody, I can give you those numbers. I have records on that from our computer. And you will see the option. You'll see, you'll see the difference. EcoBoost on a Ford F-150 cost you more. I do not have EcoBoost on a Ford F-150 because of the cost of it. And not only that, over a period of two or three years, you don't get the payback on the EcoBoost. I might as well go with the 5 liter engine. It's cheaper to buy. So my experience is telling me, you know, this is, this is a way for us to do it and the cheapest way to do it. So I, I just heard you talking about best value or whatever. This is my experience. Yeah. Well, actually, there may be a case where best value comes into play, where um, the cost of fuel and other things for a ve on the vehicle may offset the the, the, low, the higher cost of the vehicle. But anyway. I, I, the only thing I would like to say is I would like to have the common board act on this because it's in the period of the build-out year now, and if we don't do something on this, and it's up to the board, not me, but in 2015, they're going to change over the factories for the new model year, so we, we might wind up spending more money for 2015 because those bids, I would believe, you're not going to buy 2015 for the same price as a 2014. Um, I'm pretty sure there, there would be a percentage of increase in that. Yeah. 
Uh, I thought we would, I really thought we would get more bids uh, on this pickup truck than these two did anyway. Uh, but Carbone is, is the individual, and the board is well aware of what happened to one of the other trucks that we bought from Carbone. If you remember, the town board had to send our letters to them to find out where our truck was. And that was a, a year ago, and that's 55 yeah, dollars. That, so. so my experience is telling me maybe, uh, you know. All right. So anyway, we got the bid on this. Um, you know, this is what we had indicated to go out to bid on, but you know, John has suggested maybe we, we look at something else. No, Kirk, Kirk does make some good points. So, this so when, you were, when you were talking about the carbone, are you okay with this accepting this bid? I am okay with with, with the board accepting the bid with the exception of we have to make sure that these vendors are doing what they're supposed to do period if they don't provide what we you know need or order okay at that certain date then we, 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 we got to do something yeah we we dealt with that last time and yes we did so and, and it should have certainly got their attention but i mean i don't you know maybe it's time for me to have some help from our town engineer and I would appreciate that and maybe we can tighten up some of these specifications on the equipment and say okay you know like you know 60 mile radius or 50 mile radius or you know if, if, you, if you don't produce this on a due date then you're fined you know a thousand dollars a day or 500 or something I mean there's other ways to do that but you got to be you know you got to be you know, satisfied with how you do that when you, when you yeah, well, we'll deal with that if it happens. But does anyone want to make a motion to approve the award the bid on this four by four? I'll put forth the motion to award the bid on the four by four. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. All right, we only got one bid on the scraper. That's next. Kirk, you want to? You got anything on that? The sweeper's next. The sweeper is fine. The board asked me to negotiate with this company. And guess what? We did very, very well on this this machine. Uh, I was told to get it to 125. I was at 130. And I finally did convince them that we would take the machine for 125. It wasn't easy, but I did accomplish that. So Great. Well, well you're good at that, Kurt. <laughs> good job. <laughs> All right, so there's a motion to accept the bid on the sweeper. I'll put forth the motion to accept the bid on the sweeper. I'll second. A motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, the minutes agenda. Joanne, you will ask to have this on? Oh. I ask that this be put on the agenda. Um, a little history about this is uh, last year we had two residents that um, brought up before the town board um, uh, a request that um, the town board uh, meeting minutes be posted online two weeks after the meeting has occurred. Um, it's my understanding that according to open government uh, law, um, the secretary of the different boards need to uh, have the minutes of the boards uh, typed up and ready for the public to foil uh, two weeks after. And uh, I guess what I'm requesting is that we have a set policy in place um, for uh, recommendation for the minutes to be uh, typed up and ready um, in draft form uh, to go on the website so that residents can just with a click of a uh, click of their finger just read the minutes uh, in draft form. Uh, I've heard arguments about uh, the reasoning that uh, this shouldn't be done. Um, I can't see any arguments why they shouldn't be up on the on the website and that's what this is all about okay I think currently um, 
I think all the boards is two week two weeks is the time frame or ten days uh, to uh, have the minutes done and they're done. I think uh, you know posting them is volunteer. I don't think there's any particular. Uh, Mark, Mark, you can jump in here anytime with, with the, with, if I'm misstating what the, what, what the laws are. Um, but I think, so, you know, so we're, we're, we're complying with, with the laws. I think as the town board minutes, Sue does put up um, uh, as drafts. And I think, Ryan, I think you and Mark would prefer not having zoning and um, Planning board meetings up until they're finally adopted, and I know you have r reasons, you know, for that. I think that's currently what's, what the, what what it is. I know we're complying with with the open government laws. Whether we want to divert from that, I don't know why we would, but um, that's just I think where we stand. Yeah, yeah no, everything everything the supervisor said is legally correct. The tablet has the up. You have you could divert. You could impose uh, more strict requirements or fast requirements on planning board and ZBA minutes if you liked. Um, our town clerk, of course, is an elected official and um, you know has some discretion in this as well on town board meeting minutes. Uh, but all the things the supervisor says are correct in terms of our. Well, as far as I know, we're currently in compliance with all applicable laws with our current practices. Ryan, um, I know I asked you about this. No one is coming up in the meeting, and I know you have. To me, they sound very legitimate reasons why, uh, for planning and zoning, um, you, you're reluctant to do that for the dress. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's public hearing for the ZBA meetings, and you know they want to make sure all the resolutions are posted. You know, in five days for the resolutions to submit, and you know, start tomorrow. Like Is there any specific demand for draft minutes? Uh, that I, I, I don't know of any, but... Um. Yeah, there's none. You have that. You know, there's... Uh, if there's something very controversial, maybe, you know, something will foil it, which is they legally can't foil it after 10 days. Does that happen very often? No. No. Mm -hmm. I was just... The reason is, is the ease in uh, getting getting your hands on the minutes um, easier rather than have to go through foiling them. But just the ease. Right. But I mean, do you know of any, I mean, is there any particular problem that that no. someone hasn't no. been able to? No, I just brought it up because two people last year brought it up and I'm just following up on it. That's all. And the other thing is the agenda. If there's a set policy or precedent, it's already in place that says that items have to be on the agenda so many hours before the meeting. I don't know if that if that is in yeah. place or not. Well, the, the agenda is kind of, and it's not, I don't think that's, in, has any, that's not by any particular law. My policy has been is I'd like to have the minutes, the agenda finalized by Monday and have it posted by Monday so that the public and the board members n know what's going to be on the agenda a few days before the, the, the meeting. That's, that's my my policy okay. is, is Monday being the deadline to have something on. Okay. But I don't think there's any particular legal uh, requirement no, as far as the agenda goes. So, but that's kind of the precedent. I mean, that's now? yes. That's I mean, if, okay. if I'm certainly open to suggestions, if you want it sooner or you want it later, but I just I kind of set that as a parameter as Monday. So, okay. Ms. Do I have a statement on? on what you're talking about. Um, I know that sometimes coming to a board meeting, regardless of which one it is, I like to do a little bit of refreshing as to what happened the last time, especially if I missed it, so that I can go in knowing what was going on. So instead of it being two weeks or 10 days after the meeting, can it be X number of days prior to the next meeting? 
um, giving Mark Mikens and whomever else the time to do their checking and legal referencing and all that, but still giving us an opportunity to get caught up or refreshed so that if we have any questions or issues or something is going to be continuing possibly that we're aware of it prior to that meeting. I think there was a, I think Maybe Ryan, I talked to you about it. If the, with, if, with the meetings in draft forms, something could change and someone could read the mid draft minutes and then they, they change and they may. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's a moving document. It's still draft. It's unapproved. It's, you know, the thing could change. And that's, you know, that's part of it. And that's why you write draft in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah. foiling, if you're trying to prep for the next meeting, foiling, you put in a foil and they have X number of days to fill it and or say why they can't fill it. And then I mean, it could be 20 some odd days from the day you request a foil, 20 to 40 before you even get it. You don't foil something to get it tomorrow. Part of the stuff is that the town board meeting is aired on a time where it's able, you know, the following Friday. The Friday following the meeting. People can always, you know, DVR it or whatever they do on Facebook. It's not even the town board meeting that's a problem. The suit will come up. Is there a way we can put the video on our website? I mean, yeah. you can do that, right? That's I think I think what, what Nancy's talking about is talking about plan planning and, and zoning. But it's more some of the other board meeting minutes that don't go up in draft form. Okay. But instead of it being X number of days after the meeting, maybe two days prior, yeah. the next meeting. I think they're up. They would be up for anybody to review before the next mm -hmm. meeting, anyway. Yeah, I think uh, that's Lucy. It depends, you know, on. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want to make it a strict policy. If you guys can do it, um, yeah. 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 you know, I think Mark and uh, Ryan come up with some good points and zoning planning board meetings. Maybe we should go with their wishes how they want to do it. Mike, you had a question? Just to uh, remind you where this approval is what I really talked about. Mm -hmm. It's a pending period, but all that has to be the three minimum for five years. Yeah, that's, right. that's true. Yeah. Right. No, they are they are available. There's no question about that. Is whether whether you put them up on the one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We already do that. Yeah. We already do that. Yeah. Problem. They don't have to be. Mine was just, my suggestion, was just to make it easier for residents. They go to the website, they click, and there are the minutes. Yeah. And it says draft. Exactly. Yeah. So I think exactly. what I'm hearing is that, you know, what kind of, you had a question? From uh, le uh, last mm -hmm. town board meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Because for a while they were no, they've yeah. been going up on Monday yeah. with the agenda. And again, it's not a requirement. We do it as, as, a, as a courtesy to the public. And um, <laughs> we'll continue to do that uh, from the town board's perspective. But I don't want to put that onus on the planning and zoning. I, I, I leave it, to me, I would just leave it optional to, to, to Ryan as the department head there, whether they can or want to, want to do that. And I gather from the consensus here that's We'll continue with that policy. Are the other are your board meetings um, on video on the website? No. Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes agenda? Uh, just uh, uh, is everybody okay with getting the, the agenda items by Monday deadline? Is that Monday's great? The town board. Uh, committee reports. Any? The emergency plan you put me on. We talked about uh, 
getting on with the county radio system for backup plan in case we have something happen with the town that has been approved. We talked about five portables. Jeff called Pittsfield and his report had bring up the number, but I think it's a good move. It's good. I think that's going to come up later, right? On the, on the well, he's going to give you the numbers. Yes, yeah, right. Jeff called, uh, got some numbers. Yeah, that worked out really good, John. Thank you for your. What do you want to do about the ethics of the do that? Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion point Chuck uh, Hodges to the ethics board. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Just so you know, we, you know, we in, in had interviewed Chuck earlier. Yeah, he, uh, he's very interested in serving on that board. We only have three right now, so we have one one addition, and I think that'll be he's going to be a great asset. So we have a motion and a second to appoint uh, Chuck. Any, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We would have got it through with you <laughs> <laughs> but with only four votes. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. We move right along. Uh, do you have anything? Uh, I just wanted to have a couple of announcements. I had an email yesterday that I received from uh, Boy Scout Troop 24. They're celebrating their 60th anniversary um, at Camp Saratoga on Scout Road. Uh, they're doing a 60th anniversary on June 22nd from 1 to 4. And uh, I just was told from the Heritage Society moved their Strawberry Social from Father's Day to June 29th uh, from 1 to 4. Is there anything else? Okay. One uh, just a reminder for announcements uh, the Oaks Flag Day Parade is uh, the 14th. Uh, anyone who can make it, it's great. Starts in North Broadway, noontime. It's always a great parade. Yep. Uh, anyone else? Any reports? Okay, uh, controllers report. Jeff? Okay, the first item on the budget transfer is required to come for approval. Um, in here are those five portable radios that Dan spoke of earlier. Um, and the um, total cost per radio is $1,571.75, and that's without that remote speaker. Right. Okay. So I'm asking the board for a it comes in just under eight thousand dollars for five hundred. It's five chargers too, right? Yeah. Chargers this is what we're getting. The F individual XPS model fifteen hundred. Um trunking ninety six hundred four. That's what that is. Uh, trunking. That's so you can communicate with everybody. And then when I get in most people get the charger. Smart rack no. three. Three years and one year and twenty dollars charge the radio for program. Right. So within those budget transfers, uh, I think the cost of the radio. Uh, and I also have a budget amendment, which is not on here, but it has to do with those two vehicles that the town board is approved to purchase. And um, you know, I'll give you an updated control report tomorrow morning, but it's a budget amendment in the amount of $152,852 coming out of the appropriate fund balance in the highway fund and we'll get into the VA 5130.2 account which is how it is the town board approval for the budget transfers and the budget amendment. Right. That's to cover the vehicles that we approved tonight. Okay. Okay. Alright, so we need a motion to approve the uh, budget transfers and the budget amendment. Motion and second. 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 Motion and a second. Any discussion on those? I I just like to know a little more information about the radios. Yeah. And you know, I know they're sounds like they're very important. I just want to know a little bit more about what we're spending that money on. I'm because I'm a little. I'll just admit it to it. Uh, just want to make sure I know, understand what it's used for. We have an emergency in the radio system. Like our town system goes down, we have the house people okay. to be able to talk to the sheriff's department and the fire department, EMS. Okay. We will have our own channel where the highway can talk to the engineer or the building inspector. Okay, sounds good. I just wanted to make sure. Right, the gas. Right, the gas. Okay. Then when we bought radios from Friday Farm, those things were like $1,900 a piece. So that's a good deal. Okay. 
And this is on our state contract. This is state contract. Okay. You know, the way the weather has been the last few years, I think it's going to have a trend to that. No, I mean, I, it sounds appropriate. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Okay. I even thought maybe we should have one for Gavin Park, too, because that's a shelter, but we could probably, you or Mark, or be given one up to put there so oh, everybody good. would be talking to each other. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, right? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, next slide is the capital project on Gavin Park. Um, Ronnie got an estimate for national grid. Um, the estimate is $72,291 to be the link to They are demanding to be paid up front. And this is just an estimate. Um, and this is to upgrade electrical service at the uh, Gavin Park. Um, what I'm asking for is a, uh, a budget amendment in the amount which is stated in a much utility report. But I'm also asking for the town board to authorize the upfront payment because it's something that yeah, it's, it's great when you have a monopoly on things and you <laughs> it's not like you have another source to go to. <laughs> uh, it's to increase the uh, electrical capacity at the uh, park right now. They're on growing. They're a single phase. They're maxed out. Yeah, we we want to uh, we plan on putting the air conditioning in in the, uh, one of the gyms and yeah, you know, and for the future it's always growing down there. We needed to upgrade the electric. This is a capital project we took on for a while ago, and all the engineering's been done. And the last piece was getting National Grid to to do it. And now they and we didn't know what the cost was going to be. And now now we we uh, they're telling us this is going to be seventy two. Thousand, but it could be less. It could yeah, could be less. Ryan and I are going to stay on top and make sure we're going to try and force them to give us the actual bills. Although Ryan had some conversation and it, wasn't, it didn't go our way, so we're going to try and work with them to get the bills to make sure that we get it done. Okay. Any other questions? We have one number down the man, and they thought it wasn't there. You know, it's not too much data. Uh, especially there are some people with medical conditions that yes. might need that, that power. You know, the price. Yeah. So I, I guess I need uh, to the town to uh, approve the budget amendment and also to authorize the um, upfront payment also to authorize yeah. to sign the yeah, I mean, it's important we keep this project moving. We want to get that done before the summer camp. Um, I make a motion, bro, but move ahead. I'll second that motion. Are these on for somehow tied to the rental fees or use I'm specifically identifying the well received and well planned. Every year we move, no, we underwrite it. A good amount of money, say twenty five thousand dollars Do they factor in these non-fishing costs for next year? I mean, as far as raising fees or anything? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, not necessarily. No, these these are, you know, these are improvements that the that the board wants to make to the park. We did the water system oh, th no, this year, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, I'm just saying, our our, our prices at Gavin Park comparable to the other Well, they're probably they're probably less, but you know, we want to provide the recreation. We're oh, not, yeah, they you know, it's. No, it's it's uh, they they generate a lot a lot of revenue, but we can't obviously cover all the costs of our recreation. So, oh, no. uh, well, I'm thinking that the field day is um, it's not complete. Those rides they didn't want to they sell things, and they've been reported. It's unfortunate that they might have to raise the prices on something like that. I'm interested in covering as much cost as we can. So we have money to help uh, underwrite common use. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we, I mean, don't forget, we do have those uh, uh, park and rec impact fees that are charged to, uh, to developers that go into to, to make improvements at the park as well. As well. So we want to keep the burden off the taxpayers as much as we can. Yeah, but then for I mean, that's All right. Um, so anyway, I think we have a motion, motion and second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? So moved. Next. Okay. Um, I'm going to ratify the decision to allow personal tax to the town assets at the auction. Mm -hmm. Attached to this here, but I think it's up to uh, the town board on May 2nd. Right. Mm -hmm. The Kirk had a go off the auction in support. Okay. Motion to ratify the disposal of the town assets. I'll put forth the motion to ratify the disposal Sorry, of the town yeah. assets. The motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, next is Kathy Washington requesting approval to send the full Monroe to itself of the evaluation of RPS reports out to the you know, I'm a big believer in more people be educated and keep them educated. And we have some problems in that office. And this ain't making much harmony. I make a motion that all three of them go. If they all don't go, Kathy and Tina Westover go because she is the assistant. Uh, the motion here is to approve overnight travel. It's, uh, yeah. the, who is sent is the responsibility of the uh, uh, department head. We don't get involved in, in doing that. If we're going to get involved in that, us to keep our people well educated. We certainly don't want to close an office for three days. Um, mm -hmm. such a you want to have a town clerk to handle three days? I don't think anything I that think major. I think the town clerk's got enough to do without mm -hmm. having to to monitor the assessor's office. Uh, um, I certainly not going to support closing the office down to three days. The, requ the, the request is. Wait a minute. Right? Yeah, this is our decision to make here. We had public comment. Well, I look at it. I think. Uh, Tina asks every year and she just turned down every year just and then we want harmony in that office it just we all encourage training yeah. you split it up you know you gotta the recommending uh, two people go that's the supervisors if we're going to start micromanaging every department then we might as well get rid of the department heads well I do have a comment that I think doesn't need to be in the warrant to be incurred. We have a full rebound coming in 2016 per our town's cyclical plan in place and approved. How much should we spend last time hiring outside managers to have our 2012 done? That was 100000 but first of all, we haven't decided to go ahead with that anyway. That's approved and into the county, is it not? No. I have a record of that saying that it was sent to the county approved as a cyclical plan for Oh, it is. Well, it's actually not the county, it's the state. The state? Um, yeah. But they, they were named on their financing of it, too, so I don't know that we're really locked into having to do that. But I think that's going to be a decision down the road whether we're going to actually go forward with that. So. Uh, and to go back to, go back to, Tina, to, go back to Tina's... Uh, I think the issue here is, is online like, travel. <laughs> I'd like to see Tina be able to go to a conference. I meant... I'm hoping that we can find another date or time that offers very similar or a course that's... I don't think we can offer every other year, if at all. This class that I, you know, that we're talking about in this term, I think whether we go through the update or not, it's a class that is not offered every year. You call on to go on the other class. If we do end up going through the 2016 update, which that's what everybody's being told, this is a very important class, I would say, for the assessor and the assistant, as I emailed all of you guys early. Right. I talked to Kathy and I asked if there was another way we can find another class um, that you could go to. Uh, 
I guess there is none. There is none in the whole entire state of New York. I don't, know, like, no, I'm just, I don't believe that. But anyway, and I mean, the, the bottom line is, when you go back and forth, they can turn you to. And because there's been concerns in the office, I have to suffer for not going my turn this year. There's no turn. You know, if we're going to start second guessing our department heads, we're going to say when Ryan says, "Oh, we need engineering here," we're going to say, "Oh." We're going to start second guessing, and you know what? We don't. It, it's it's ridiculous. Um, we have department heads to make these decisions. Um, you had a department head that was actually qualified. Oh, you know I don't want to listen to you. So, I'm sure you don't. I'm so anyway, I'm I'm cutting you off. Okay. So, I agree with John. I think. Uh, if the assessor is going, I think the assistant assessor should go also. And uh, then when we, when every, when uh, Ryan wants to send people to the building code department, when Steve wants to send someone to training at the parks, we're going to have to sign off. On, you want to take that those responsibilities away from the department? It, it's absolutely stupid. You want to start micro micromanaging the departments? It's ridiculous. We, the purpose of this thing on tonight is to approve overnight travel. That's all. Not to approve who goes. So I'm going to ask, is there a motion to approve overnight travel? I'll put forth the motion to approve overnight travel. I thought John did, but I know he had a contingency on it. Uh, no, there's no motion. Well, he had a motion to approve uh, all three going. Is right. there a second to that? Can we send all three of them? You made that motion. Yeah. Is there I'll anyone who wants a second all th three to go? To go? I'll, I'll second, second all three to go. Okay, there's a motion and a second send all three to go. We'll vote on that first. Uh, those in favor? I mean, I'd like to discuss one more. Is it, is, is it possible to do that? I mean, I don't. I, I it's shut down our department for three from days. From a management point of view, it's, it's no. You, it's a, one of the busiest offices in town hall. You come in every day, and you can't expect Sue and her deputy to cover the assessor's office. What do people come and get during July at that time? Because most people are on vacation. That's when the school tax bills come out. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's that office is busy every day. And to shut to shut it down and expect other people to cover it is 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 very poor business. I don't want, no. I'm not going to recognize it. So we have a motion and a second to send all three. In favor. Favor. I vote in favor. Opposed. 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 So two two doesn't happen. Is there a motion to approve overnight travel for the for as per the request? I put forth the motion to uh, propose uh, overnight travel for Kathy and Nicole. Is there a second? Okay, no second. Nobody goes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, the next one, the last one, uh, Steve Portal is requesting that my office release um, certain team days and trust him prior to the event. Um, for the team defendants would like to have their checks at the end of the event, something that um, we can't find policy, so the town board had the previous feedback. So, yeah, we've done this in the past with, with these the certain vendors that require payment up front. I 
purport the motion? Yes, he pays it at the end of the year. So but he has he has a check on. though. He yeah, has at, a check. The, at yeah. the services are performed. Right, but they're at, they're out of my control and we're passing the control on. But this is a special event for that one. I'd make a motion to uh, draw, uh, write out the checks and uh, give them to Mr. Porto to hold until the vendors are finished with their event. I'll second it. A motion and a second. John, the motion was to approve the the the, the payment of the bills on uh, number six there under the Parks Department. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. That's it. Okay, that concludes the meeting. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a good night.